Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to do a brief video talking about the various types of telephones on the ship, because today is the day after Thanksgiving and you really should have remembered to call your family. So, Battleship New Jersey has at least three different types of telephones on board when she's in service throughout the various times of her career. This space is called the Telephone Exchange Room, or the PBX, and it's where the ship's service telephones would have been routed through before they went to another receiver. Ship service telephones are specifically for talking from one room on the ship to another. This uses a four-digit dial code that starts with the number seven. There are approximately 800 of this type of phone on board the ship. In this space today, you're seeing a mix of the original, at least original to the 1980s, equipment that would have been used to run the phone system, and the more modern equipment, because the Navy gutted a lot of the original stuff that was in here, or otherwise it was unable to function. So we replaced it with slightly more modern systems that were able to function and keep some of the original telephones working. We currently have about one third of those original 800 phones uh, scattered around the tour route that still work. And uh, keeping them functioning or getting more functioning is a simple matter of plugging the different phones into the computer so that an extension is associated with a specific phone in a specific place throughout the ship. So this type of phone here with 7660, remember that uh, four digit seven starting number I told you about, is one of those ship service phones. As you can tell, uh, this is a little bit more modern. This is a 1980s edition. There would have been a World War II era uh, phone system on board. However, it seems like most, if not all, of those original phones uh, were swapped out for this kind. Notice that even though this is the modern 1982 style of phone, it is still a rotary dial phone. Again, these are for point to point. From this room, I can call another room on the ship that has a phone like this. I cannot, even if the ship is ashore and plugged into a landline, call off of the ship. Another type of 80s phone that we have on board are the uh, red phones that you see throughout the ship. There are 46 of them around the ship, primarily in command and control facilities. They are radio control stations that go through SAS, also known as the Coke machine, which is this uh, big red thing about the size of a Coke machine. Uh, that, that is a radio for point-to-point -point communications with other ships. So if the Coke machine has specific frequencies programmed into it, uh, let's say you're operating with a battle group, you program whatever your frequency is for that entire battle group, that means that whatever one of the command and control spaces you might be in, uh, right now we are in after plot, so we're aiming the five inch guns and another ship is about to come across our line of fire, I can get on this phone and immediately call somebody on one of these phones on that ship and tell them that uh, whatever I need to tell them, that they're about to be on the receiving end of five inch rounds. In terms of original World War II era phones, all around the ship, you'll see sound powered phones like this one. One of my favorite things to ask kids on tours is what powers a sound powered phone. The kids always get it right. The answer is sound. Adults tend to say, well, electricity, obviously. Electricity powers everything. The sound-powered phones are specifically for when you lose electricity or have otherwise taken battle damage. Phone lines might be cut, power might be cut. If that happens, your radio telephone's probably out. Your uh, ship service telephone, probably out. The sound-powered phones will work unless the specific line that connects this to the other sound-powered phones is cut. When you speak into the phone, your voice vibrates a membrane. That membrane generates just enough power to transmit your voice over the line. These phones are on a party system, uh, so if I pick this up, this is probably the gunnery department or one of those sorts of things, so everybody else in the gunnery department is on that phone line listening. There are several different phone uh, circuits like that throughout the ship for various party lines for various departments. You can see that there are multiple circuits that you can plug into, such as these right here. 
In addition to handsets like this one, these phones also have headsets like these over in this corner where it goes on over your head and there's a piece that sits on your chest right here. You just have to push down that button on your chest to speak into it, release it, and you can hear whatever someone else is speaking. Uh, very similar to that, the phone over here has a push button on the handset as well. Earlier, I said that this one's probably on a gunnery specific circuit. Well, do your shipboard archaeology. You can see exactly where it's plugged into. Uh, these things are called growlers. Uh, this particular sound powered phone can call one of 16 different uh, places. Things like the pilot house, CIC, CEC, radio transmitter room. So all of these important places around the ship, you just turn the dial to whichever number on the chart. Uh, so we're in secondary battery plot. I'm now calling uh, main battery plot forward. And then you crank on that. These are called growlers because they then make a, a really terrible squawking sound in the uh, space that you're calling. And that's what lets you know to pick up the phone. In addition to these sorts of phones which work throughout the ship, there would also be certain telephones or certain offices around the ship that had regular telephones in them that uh, when you're in port and the telephone lines get plugged in, those will work. By the 1980s, the ship also would have had pay phones back on the mess decks, most likely, which, uh, again, same way, when you're plugged into the phone system, you can pay to make a call home from one of those phones. At sea, if you wanted to call from home, you would have to get a ham radio operator on the ship to make a radio call to a ham radio operator ashore and have them patch through the phone system to whatever loved one you're trying to get a hold of. Even in the modern Navy, it can be difficult for sailors to call home. For example, my cell phone doesn't work inside the ship because of the armor plate, and, and we're somewhere that actually has service. In the middle of the ocean, likely no cell phone towers to give you service. So, this holiday season, be sure to think of and pray for our service members who are deployed overseas who have difficulty communicating with home. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to continue to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.